day today. Check it out. Well, we gotta go check the mail, so I'm gonna take you with me. Damn it. We're gonna fix that today, maybe. Well, actually, we're just gonna put some fix a flat in it because it, it's got a real slow leak, so. Ah. There's one package. I will get the main package. Man, the camera's getting wet. On Monday. So you'll see this Monday. Ooh. But I can tell you, it's batteries. But for what? You'll have to wait till Monday. Alright, let's get on to the other projects. We're, we're going to be doing a couple projects today. So let me get this camera wiped off, change the battery. Ooh. And uh, we'll get started on something. Hang tight. Okay guys, today this is some of the stuff we're going to be using. We're not going to be using that. I just got, I picked that up because I had to get some welding wire for this project for Monkey, which you'll see. Um, we're going to use these for, and these, and these, for little feet for the air compressor, which is doing good. Uh, it dropped down to 80 overnight. So, I think this, there's a little button here you can push. Sometimes you can hear it seeping there. That's no big deal. Alright. So, first thing we're going to do is, see these are going to be the feet, right? Like the legs, and here's going to be the feet. It'll go actually up under here like this, but it'll give it a little... You know, like a little foot to stand on. So, so the first thing I got to do is I got to get, get my drill out. I got to drill a couple holes so I can put these in. And I'm going to grind these off flat. You know, here. So they don't have that curve out to them. So they'll screw on flat. Alright, these are the bolts we're going to be using with these stainless steel washers. These are uh, uh, lock nuts, so I won't have to use a lock washer on it, see, and they'll grip right in, so these should be okay, and um, alright, so let me get you set up on a stand, and the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead, we're going to grind these off smooth, flat, you know, and then we'll put these up in here, and we'll drill a couple holes holes in it. Uh, I need to move my phone. There we go. And uh, so I got the welding wire. Um, I got some new tips. He gave me these tips. Uh, I think they're 35,000 so I'm not sure. There's my tip. So I want to try these tips and see if they work. I didn't, didn't get a nozzle. I think the nozzle will be fine. Uh, it's got a little ding right there but nothing a file can't take care of but anyway just for what we're going to do with this like I said we'll get to this later we're going to build monkey something so let me get you on the stand and we'll get ready to go there's my helmet take this out now we're going to change our wheel that button and unscrew this. I'm just going to use this one. It's an old wheel. It's something that, you know, when I don't have to get so aggressive, it's worn down. I think it's um, like 40 grit, but it's worn down so it's not so aggressive. 
and I just bring, I just hand tighten them like that. You can use a wrench, but I found when I do, that causes more strain on these. And then once one of these breaks, you try to get that off of there, it's a pain in the ass. So I just uh, tighten them by hand. I know a lot of guys are going to say, no, nah, you should use the tool, get you a tool. Well, I've got the tool right here, but like I said, um, I've never had one come loose on me. Never had one fly apart. You know, from here, from being too loose or anything. So, all right. running in the background monkey's home today so she's doing she's doing her thing and everything's got to go underneath the bench okay so that should be okay see it's going to go it's going to go like that there so. well actually right about there is how it's going to go so. alright now I'm going to go ahead and do this one. I'm not going to bore you with it. Then we'll move on to step two. We're going to drill these out. get a drill bit. make a nice hook but in this case it's going to be feet for our legs I, I know it's dropped down here a little bit from here but that's what I want that'll give me the length I need so all right I'm going to draw out the other one and what I'm going to do though you know what I shouldn't have tightened that yet because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one as a template same way and then we'll put it on to the air compressor okay now as you can see I've got that propped up 
on that little thing we had it propped up on yesterday where it's perfectly level now as you can see hopefully that'll be perfect size perfect height so let's go ahead we're gonna get our bolt put our bolt through here Screw it on as far as we can with our hands. Now we're going to put our, our wrench on the back. Well, it would help if I had something on the end of this, right? This is a 15 millimeter headed bolt. I'm not sure what the threads are, but right there. Okay, let's move the thing. Yes, there's our little feet. All right, again, I'm not going to bore you with the other side. I'm going to put the other side on, and this little girl will be done. It'll be ready for Ryan to come and look at whenever he gets a chance to stop in. Because he's wanting to bring the tent and set it up and show it to me and everything. It's an old one. I, I forget how old he said it was. 80s maybe I don't know but anyway so I'm, I'm gonna get the other side on this will be done he's not getting my blow gun but I'll give him the arrows if he wants it and um, then we'll start on monkeys project but first we got to take the um, uh, the welding wire that's two pound thirty thousandths roll that and the uh, grinding wheel was twenty nine dollars and something and I'll show you how to put that on there and run it up through. It's real easy. And then we'll plug that in. We'll check our helmet out, make sure it's still working. Sometimes it kind of acts a little goofy. That's okay. And then we'll we'll work on this. So let me get that other side on and I'll be back with you. All right, guys. Here's our little welder. It's just one of those, it's just 110. Just a little Chicago electric MIG welder wire feed. Um, I'm going to open the top up here. Now this thing apparently they're having a lot of issues with these as well as I am too. Um, these things see how they're they're plastic and they kind of move I don't know if you can see that moving there. It moves apart. This is your drive wheel. This is what pushes the wire through and out to the stinger. Okay, now if you keep this tight so it don't unravel, it doesn't push it through. So I've seen guys putting C-clamps and stuff on here, which is probably what I'm going to do. And this is not an isolated problem. I guess people are buying them brand new and they're having that issue. And you would think by now, Chicago Electric would fix that. So why they're not or why they haven't I don't know I mean look I understand it is a cheap welder but geez you know it should do what it's supposed to do I've said that a million times okay so <clears throat> this is uh this is probably what comes with it so or what came with it I'm using Radner um, I like their products I used it a lot when I was working at uh, the trailer, Fruitland Park trailers, and um, sorry, what? What? <laughs> I have to go. <laughs> like I said, monkey's off day. She's doing laundry, cleaning the house. Uh, she never has a day off, really getting about that time here hopefully once the CV-19 gets under control hopefully we'll uh, we'll I'll get to take her out and do something <laughs> okay so I'm gonna put you on the fuck was that Did you hear that 
Oh, thunder, guys. Must have hit something. Lightning. Okay, so let's get this put on here. I'm going to put you on the stand so you can see a little better. Okay? Try to get you over here. I know the lighting sucks, but we'll get we'll get into that sometime. Uh, right now i got other things, other projects. So i got you on the stand here. Whoops. Okay, well, I was going to bring you in it anyway. Um, what I'm... What I, what I want to show you is how to feed this through, and it's going to be kind of hard to do. I can get you up in there, maybe. That might do it. I'll show you how this this just, you know, goes, goes on to the spool like that. So I'm going to open this up, and uh, I'll show you how to how to start feeding this through um, but first uh, I'll, sh I'll show you this uh, also you want to keep your wire as straight as you can keep your stinger as straight as you can keep it that'll help and not bunching up so bad so this is just going to pull out you want to get that pulled out like that. Now you have fishing wire in case you want to, not that kind of fishing, your heads know what I'm talking about, in case you got to run wires down through a hole and it's good for that. Okay, so this, this is where that little tip is going to screw on. I'm going to screw onto this, but first, let's get this started up through here. Whoops, sorry. Um, that monkey behind me messing around there this is this is the way it comes this is flux core so what we're going to want to do so I'm going to put this on here first over here so we want to just screw that on there made to adjust to put tension on it but if you put any kind of tension on it it won't feed through okay so now we're gonna to have to cut this off let me grab my cutters okay so we're gonna Pull this out through here, out that little hole right there, and we're going to cut this off straight. You want it as straight as possible because if you get any kind of interference, and this is trying to push it a lot of times if you if you melt the tip or weld the wire to the tip, this is keep wanting to push through and it just keeps pulling the wire off and you get what you call a bird's nest, or what we call a bird's nest, okay? And I'll have to get you a close-up shot to show you something else here in just a second. Now you want to get this started. See how it's... See. I'll show you here in a second a better view of it. But you see that wire? See, it's going... There's little... There's two sides of this. There's a 30 thousandths and a 35 thousandths, okay? So what you what you want to do is you want to open this up, relieve the pressure off of it. Let's pull that up and pull that out. There's a little groove right here. And you're going to want to make sure that once you get this through that hole, uh, sorry about that. Gotta get it through this little hole here. I'm going to start that through, you know, go a little bit with it, you don't have to go far. I mean, you can feed it all the way through if you want, but what I usually do is let it, see like I said, there's a little groove right, right there on that wheel, that's your drive wheel. Make sure that wire is in that groove, this one's just got a bearing. Um, 
it seems to be okay. It's a little dirty. But like I said, they're having trouble with these things. And um, it's like they don't want to fix it, but they'll take your money. And then, oh well, right? And I had this as tight as I could go with it. My hands in the way, sorry. I had this tightened as tight as I could go and it was still slipping. Like I said, a lot of guys are putting clamps on here, which is probably what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to tighten this down all the way. <clears throat> okay, that's as tight as it'll go. Now I'm going to plug this thing in. All right, I'm going to back you out a little bit. I'm going to plug it in. And all right. I'm going to flip the switch on just like that. Here's the stinger. I'm just going to pull the trigger until the wire comes out here. Seems to be feeding okay. I'm turn the speed up a little bit. Uh-oh. See, there it just just caught up on something. That should not have come out like that. All right, so I guess we'll go ahead and we'll put the tip back in it. I'm gonna try one of these new tips that the guy gave me. It's a thirty-five thousandths, but you can. Uh, yes, it does fit. Good. Seems to be feeding okay. Um, now we're gonna clip this off. About right there. Now we're gonna put our nozzle on. Just like that. And that's about about where you're gonna be welding at. Another thing I don't like about this, this thing, if you touch it, like right now that it's on, if I had it grounded to something and I touched it, it'll it'll want to weld before before you pull the trigger. So I don't know if they're doing if they're having issues with that too or not. I don't know. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this back over back over onto the onto its little cart. And then we're going to do a little bit of welding. There, just like that. Uh, so let me get it over here, and I'll get everything set up, and I'll show you what we're going to do for Monkey. Okay, so we got these little um, flower hangers. I call them shepherd's hooks. We got two of them. What we're going to do is we're going to weld these together. like that so she can hang it's for um, her mom's dog that is buried out in our backyard and what we're going to do is we're going to weld these like this so she can hang a plaque on one side and a little plant on the other or a little flower or something and I think she got these Dollar Tree or somewhere they were bucked but the first thing, I'm just going to put like three tacks of weld. I'm going to put one up here, one in the center, and one down here where these things are going to go. Like that. I could probably JB weld it. It might be fine, but I want it to be strong enough for her, you know, so it doesn't come apart for her. But the first thing i got to do is clean this paint off of here so we can maybe get a good weld to stick. 
So let me get this cleaned off. Not, again, not going to bore you with it. I'm just going to take the paint off over on the wire brush, the wire wheel, and three spots. Then we'll get to welding. Well, I may have to do a fourth spot to where I can... I'm going to put it in a vise, so I, I'll probably have to... Uh, I might be able to ground to the vise, but we'll we'll just see. I'll prob what I'll probably do is just go ahead and clean off another spot down here because I'm going to repaint these anyway. They're still going they're still going to be the color black, but they're not. You know, it's going to have weld welds on it, and they're not going to be pretty. So yeah, I'll just uh, maybe you know right here or something. I'll put my. Um, my ground clamp on my ground cable so all right let me get this get this paint cleaned off of here and then we'll move on okay I got the fan running behind me sorry I cleaned off that down there so I've got the clamp on there hopefully we can get you know some some spark action out of that and I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, stinger out here I gotta get my welding helmet on so I'm not hitting the button. Now I am. Um, let me grab my welding gloves. Hang on. Okay. Got my welding gloves. Alright. Now. And see if we can't tack these together. go down here a little bit more. And off to the side. Alright, so there's that. Take the ground off. I'm going to go ahead and tack it on both sides. And, uh, down and repeat. Let's go to the middle one now. About right there. Now I'm going to squeeze these together. With these vice grips. I'm trying to stay out of your guys' way here. like that okay now let's do this one not getting in the center Not looking too bad. All right, let's go ahead and get the top, and then we'll spin it around and do the other side. <clears throat> go 
itself. I need to plant these so they'll stay together a little better anyway. Make sure they're somewhat straight. We're gonna get these guys on here. greatest boy. I love the Miller 212s. They are awesome machines. It's a little bit off but I can straighten it. Yeah nothing beats gas you know what I mean? See, it did kind of turn on me up here, but it'll be all right. Pretty close. These things aren't straight to begin with, as you guys probably saw. This doesn't have a temperature setting, it just has a, a minimum and maximum on it. Uh, it does have the only real setting it's got is a speed setting on it. So, um, I'm going to grab my wire brush here. Not too bad. All right. Now I'm gonna let this cool down. Have me a smoke, and once it gets cool, I'm gonna clean it off and uh, shoot some paint on it, and then maybe we'll go out and put some fix a flat in the golf cart because after you do that, you should ride it around, you know. So <laughs> stick around for more fun. You guys remember the wire we? took out of the welder. I just braided it together. There we go. Don't throw anything away. Put some paint on here.
I also ground a couple points in this thing so she can, so it'll go in the ground a little easier for her. Now, let's find a place to hang it. All right, we got our little trident shepherd hook there, hanging, drying. Now we're going to go out here to the golf cart. I'm going to put some fix -a flat in that back tire. Then we'll take it for a little drive. I'm not going to put you guys in the rain. I'll put you here and zoom you in. And every time. Alright. Of course it won't take the whole can, it's just a little tire. Don't you love it? Great. Still half a can there that can't be used. Jesus Christ. Alright, I'm going to bring it over here, shoot some air in it, and um, then we'll take it for a little ride. Using the air compressor we just built it just kicked on so okay let's go for a little ride We're just cruising. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me.
does that sometimes, it'll stop for no reason. If you put it wide open too quick. I'm not sure what. Yeah, I, I'm not much on these electric golf carts. I know a little bit. I could probably figure it out, which I probably will. Uh, turn signal. bad. So hopefully that fix a flat will do something for that tire because it's just it's a little tiny hole. You know it, it goes about half flat overnight. So I'd hate to put a big ass plug in just a little tiny hole that that stuff should take care of but who knows right. Alright let's get this thing turned around here. An older golf cart needs a little work, but you know, for 1200 bucks, and it is street legal, everything like that works. But, uh, like, it needs tie rod ends, and, uh, a couple of the batteries uh, don't hold a charge real well. I think they got a dead cell in them, two of them. So it doesn't hold charge super great, you know. But the stereo works. Uh, let's see. It's not a CD player. It's got an an aux port in it, auxiliary jack, you know, to run your 3.5 millimeter aux cable. It will take a um, SD memory card and a thumb drive. But it doesn't have CD player. But you can fit more on a thumb drive or SD card anyway. Or that aux port, you know, to plug your phone in. Rain's getting to us, man. We just can't get a break from it. All right, let's head into the garage and uh, shoot the crap in there for a minute. Okay, guys, so thanks for hanging with me. We got a couple things done. We got the um, air compressor. We got it. It's done. It's ready to go. We're ready to work. Uh, like I said, if you don't want it, I'll just keep it. Um, we got this thing, which is dry now. Monkey's little shepherd's hook. Turned out okay. All right? We re the um, welder. We put a new tip on it. Um, it seemed to be feeding okay, so... But I know everybody's been having problems with it. I had problems with it. Her dad had problems with it. I know... When he said you can use it, he says it doesn't want to feed right. He says you got to keep it real loose. Um, but it seemed to be feeding okay today. But that's not to say next time I go to use it, it's going to work fine. Um, the welder itself works okay for a little 110 uh, MIG welder. You know, a little wire feed. I still would love to have a uh, Miller 212. That's what I had at work. And uh, I love that thing, gas welder. Uh, I'd like to have a little TIG. What, I, what I'd like to have is a TIG welder and a uh, plasma cutter. And then this garage will be complete. I can get by without them. I've done it all this time. But if I see them on sale or I, if I see them, you know, yard sales or flea markets, you know, yeah, if, if, if I can get it reasonable, I'll pick one up. So, and we got the... Uh, well, some of the <laughs> fix a flat in the golf cart, we took it a ride. We'll see if it holds air. Uh, because I know Bruno at night, we take him outside. Well, I just go out and smoke a cigarette. Monkey comes out with us. Well, he, 
he automatically, he'll go pee, and then he'll jump up in the golf cart and want to take a ride. And uh, he gets upset if I can't take him for a ride because, you know, it's got a flat or something. So he likes to, I take him for a ride around the yard in the evenings, and he just loves it. So, anyway, guys, uh, like I said, we got, those are batteries. So, Monday, we're going to have another little review. Um, you guys probably already figured it out, but we'll do a review anyway and uh, do side side by side comparisons on some stuff, and that should be interesting. So we still got that Uga horn. We're going to mess with it. I've got we've got a lot of projects to do. Um, I was going to do one do another one today, but I may do it later this evening. But I didn't want this one running too long, so. I'm going to end it here, and if I get in something else, I'll get in something else. I still got a couple tools that I got to pick up here, and I get this swap up a little bit, so we can have some room to work on our next project. So again, guys, oh, update on that uh, on the twin cylinder, the opposed twin cylinder. I don't know. I was looking at the crank; it may be scored. If it's scored, I'm not going to put a couple hundred dollars in it. We'll just have to see. You know, I might find another motor for it. I might sell the whole thing. I might scrap it. I don't know. Um, but I know I can get my money back just out of the carburetor on that thing. So, just a quick update on that. So, anyway, guys, Shea Bear the Myth, the Man of Legend. I'm gone for now. Thanks for watching. Weekend's almost here. One more day. We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye and take care.